Welcome back to another crossover edition of the Locked On Cowboys and Locked On Cardinals podcast. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. Joining me today from Locked On Cardinals is the fantastic Bo Brack and Alex Clancy's. Fellas, how are we doing today? Not as good as you. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, not, not as good as you after that Monday night showing. Uh, yeah, Cowboy fans are feeling pretty good right now. Cardinals fans, uh, they're feeling the way we were like a couple of weeks ago. So uh, <laughs> I get it. Uh, but all right, let's talk about uh, where we are at at this point in the season going into week 17. But we'll start with you. What's just the general mood around the Cardinals right now going into this game? I mean, if you were to take temperature of this fan base, are they going to win a game again the rest of the 2021 <laughs> campaign? I mean, they're in a slump, a, a tremendous slump. And I mean, it was the hottest team coming out of the gates in the NFL. You couldn't uh, look at two different squads pretty much at this point. And, you know, where are they falling short? Kyler Murray coming off the ankle injury, maybe facing some inaccuracy issues, unable to kind of find some open receivers and hit them and and have as much success in the red zone. Uh, Without DeAndre Hopkins, without J.J. Watt, sure, they're facing some key injuries, but this team still has enough talent to perform better than it has the last couple weeks. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are disappointed in the performances they've seen because there was just missed opportunity after missed opportunity against the Indianapolis Colts on Christmas night. They could have won that game. They fell short. The previous week was maybe the biggest disappointment of the season. They fall to the lowly Lions. That's unacceptable. And, uh, you know, the previous week they they fall to the Rams on Monday Night Football. So the Arizona Cardinals are reeling right now. They they need to make some big plays in this upcoming game to kind of get back on track. Just like you said, where the Cowboys were, where that, that offense was slumping a little bit and there really didn't seem any – you didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Like, how are they going to fix this thing on the fly? Cowboys have remedied that. They made the adjustment, it seems like, Marcus, doesn't it? I mean – they they stopped really blitzing Dak. They realized, hey, he's tremendous with pressure in his face, and they started going to zone coverage. He struggled mightily, but then he's played that game of chess and adjusted. Kyler hasn't done that much. Alex, is the is the general vibe around the Cardinals right now that this is still a team once they're in the playoffs and they are in the playoffs that they could you know potentially still win the NFC and go to the Super Bowl. I mean, they have 53 guys who are going to play on a Sunday. So, I mean, yeah, technically they are still eligible. Yeah, and listen, we t- we we actually talked about this yesterday because it's been tough. You know, Bo and I have been uh, completely split about Cliff. Um, we've we've been split about a bunch of stuff this season, and and so is the fan base, as Bo mentioned. But like, the NFL is a fickle bee <laughs> because any weekend could change everything. And this weekend is the weekend that the NFL would rise up and have the Cardinals win by field goal and have the Rams lose to the Ravens. Then the Cardinals take over the NFC West. They probably move up to the three spot. And then the Rams are back in in a wild card spot. It's the weirdest thing where mm-hmm. the Cardinals had all of this leeway. You could, Well, they can make all these mistakes and still be here. Now there's one. And they're going to make the playoffs. But, I mean, you don't want to play the, the Bucks on the road. Are you insane? Like, you don't want to play the Cowboys again on the road. You don't want to play any of these teams on the road. Even though the Cardinals have been bad at home, you'd always take a home game over a road game. So it's been wild that way that this weekend could legitimately remedy everything. And and I've been, as Bo mentioned, we've been watching from afar with the Cowboys because they have maybe the most fun roster in football, at least on the offensive side of the ball. And look at what the defense has done. Mm-hmm. I need Jerry Jones, and we'll get into this, you know, later on as we, as we firing squad each other in, in both of these next two segments, but... Jerry Jones, I know he has his 105.3, the fan thing. I know that I know that he is very out there. He's the ringleader and everything. This year seems less circus-like and mm-hmm. more star-studded with a little bit more control of the whole situation. I don't know if that's him. I don't know if Mike McCarthy's settling in. I don't know if this roster is just so good. Like, what's the deal? This looks like a team that you have to respect and not laugh at, regardless of their record in the Cowboys this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of it has to do with Mike McCarthy. He's just, for lack of a better word, he's just a grown-up. Like, he's just a grown-up in the room that just kind of squashes all of that drama. And he's not the best coach in the world. He's not. He's not on the caliber of Bill Belichick and Andy Reid, but I think he's a pretty good coach. And what he does really well is he gets his team to play really competitive, and they don't have a lot of distractions. And I think that's really, really helped the Cowboys. And then on top of that, when you have a, a leader like Dak – it really goes a long way. Again, Dak's not a perfect quarterback. He's not a top three quarterback in the NFL, but he's not far off. And when you have somebody who is just as steady as he is on and off the field, 
it just raises your floor every week. And now they've got some really good assistant coaches and Dan Quinn and Kellen Moore. They're a really, really good football team. Does that mean that they're going to win the Super Bowl? Probably not, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did. They've got their mojo, as uh, Mike McCarthy tried to get going in Hard Knocks, the old 1990s reference that he pulled back in 2021. It's interesting, Marcus, because I feel like there are some similarities between this franchise. Now, Mark, of course, uh, you know, McCarthy was able to get over the hump, you know, in the early uh, or 2011 with the Green Bay Packers. They won the Super Bowl. So he did kind of break through that glass ceiling and then has fallen short since then. But the Arizona Cardinals fan base is like, what's the point of having a, co- a coach the caliber of Cliff Kingsbury if he, you don't believe in his ability to win the Super Bowl? I don't know. I just, it's just an interesting conversation. Listen, I, I understand that. I went through yeah. the Jason Garrett era, which is a decade of my life just gone. Cliff is a better coach than Jason Garrett. But I, I understand, right? Like, you do wonder, like, is Cliff only going to be good enough to get you to 10 wins and a wild card round and maybe a little bit further, but that's it? it it's, it's really hard because – you know, he, there's probably not a bunch of coaches out there that are better than him, but is he the one to do it? Who knows? I mean, and you look at our side here with the Cardinals, who we've been covering, and it's that's been the thing. It's been Cliff Kingsbury starting 7-0, give him a statue, give him all the money. Mm-hmm. Who, who cares if Oklahoma wants him? You know, the, the cart like, and then now – as we've seen with every Instagram model that he's dated, it starts hot and then it kind of it kind of spatters away, you know. And this is it's it's <laughs> it's a salvageable moment because the Cardinals made the playoffs, which is something that they were supposed to do last year, and which they haven't done since 2015. And I don't know if that's enough. I mean, if they win a playoff game, he's good. They're going to retain him. I'm in the camp that they shouldn't, but yeah. that's where we are. And it's interesting with Mike McCarthy because last year there were already ping slips being written in back rooms it seems like even though they gave him a 35 year contract like when it comes to when it comes to cliff i think it's kind of the same thing mm-hmm. it's the egomaniacal nature of the gm and the owner which is the same person in dallas where it's like this is the right decision i made the right decision i'm going to double down on that and that's kind of where and both so has this kind of like and we're going to get in more in depth of this have you changed your your tune at all or are you still Cliff is the guy, Cliff is the guy, Cliff is the guy. Because I don't think I've actually asked you flat out when we've been arguing with each other. No, I think that Cliff is the guy. When you see steady improvement each and every season, wins-wise, and in the offense taking a step in the right direction, and that's Cliff the Cliff's department. Like I really see a lot of the Arizona Cardinals fans kind of acting like entitled SEC fans. Like they think that perfection, if it's less than perfection with Kyler Murray and these these weapons that they have on offense, it's unacceptable. Where well, that's just not the reality of the NFL. I mean, you're going up against other professionals that are getting paid a, a ton of money, and the scheming and, and the coaching in the in the NFL is uh, is at its highest caliber. I think that Cliff Kingsbury is doing a, a solid job, and he's done everything that they've asked him, and then some. Especially with his resume, 35 and 40 in the in the Big 12, you know. I think that it's something that you obviously need patience with, and we've been patient, and we're starting to see and reap the rewards of that. They're in a slump right now. they got to get out of the slump, and it's not going to be easy come Sunday against the Dallas Cowboys. All right, I want to keep talking about these Arizona Cardinals, but before we do that, I'll tell you guys about Bet Online. I believe the Cowboys are like five-and-a-half-point favorites in this game, something around that. Uh, I suggest you go to Bet Online to bet on this game. Bet Online has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the college bowl season and the pro football playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On to receive your bonus from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC. Right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, let's keep talking about these Arizona Cardinals. I want to talk about the offense. So DeAndre Hopkins... Obviously, he's going to miss the rest of the season. We can we hope that he comes back for the playoffs because the NFL is just better with DeAndre Hopkins. Bo, how does this offense get back on track without Hopkins in the lineup? I think it's probably the uh, the kiss uh, method. Keep it simple, stupid. Sometimes you know it's just run the football, rely on, on a pretty steady back 
backfield duo and Chase Edmonds and James Conner. We'll see if he's ready to go back in the lineup for the Arizona Cardinals, uh, who's been so successful on a one-year contract. And then really just kind of catch the football. Guys need to execute. I think that the plays are there for this offense. Christian Kirk is a guy that needs to step up in the absence of DeAndre Hopkins. We started to see on Christmas night Zach Ertz become more of a, a weapon in this offense than disappeared in the second half. And then A.J. Green, who kind of had a career resurgence earlier this season and then has been uneven since. Uh, and, and then, you know, sure, the ship has sailed that Kyler Murray is going to win the MVP this season, but it doesn't mean that he can't play like an MVP candidate down the stretch and in this game. I mean, the guy has had an immense amount of success. you probably be hard-pressed to find anybody that's had more success than Kyler Murray in the state of Texas. Uh, homecoming a little bit on Sunday. Can he step it up? Can he be that MVP caliber player? The Cardinals go as Kyler Murray goes. Cliff Kingsbury knows that. He's said that several times before. This team just needs to get out there and execute, make big plays. And I think that just gets them back on track. Alex, I want to ask you about the offensive line because obviously it's a totally different unit with Rodney Hudson out of the lineup. He's expected to be back in this game, correct? Yes, he is. Uh, he's activated from the uh, from the COVID list. And okay. Bo put out a stat. He's been, yeah, he's been... Uh, Bo's been pounding the table seven and one with Kyler Murray and Rodney Hudson, eight and two overall with Rodney Hudson playing, I believe. Incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, he's been so, the go ahead. I said, okay, with Hudson back in the lineup, do you think this offense's line is good enough to to stop some of the better pass rushes in the NFL? Not just the Cowboys this week, but you know, if you know, when the, the Cardinals get to the playoffs and they're facing, let's say the 49ers in round one or Tampa Bay in the playoffs, like do you believe that offensive line can hold up? Yeah, with Rodney Hudson, absolutely. I mean, he's so so when they so when they traded all these offseason acquisitions ended up being like a veteran buddy for a young player in the same position. And with 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 uh, with Rodney Hudson, it was pretty much a whole offensive line, specifically the interior of the offensive line, because Mason Cole was an atrocity last year. Mason Cole, I, he must have led centers in false starts where he tricked himself <laughs> before he hiked the ball. She didn't make any, which didn't make any sense. But Rodney Hudson has been a vision. It's been him and James Conner with the two um, most undervalued until they performed uh, offseason signings. And then Rodney Hudson, when he's in the middle, it makes the it makes the interior of the offensive line's job so much easier. Justin Pugh looks like a fringe pro bowler when Rodney Hudson is to his right. And it allows the outside guys to not have to cheat and work and do the uh, inside offensive line's job. Rodney Hudson, he's he's the spine of the offensive line. And him and Kyler Murray seem to have synchronicity right away. So, yes. I do, I do believe that. That coupled with the outside, the uh, the uh, tackles with with DJ Humphreys and Kelvin Beecham and Kyler Murray's legs, I think, is a recipe to keep uh, opposing pass rushes at bay. Yes, well, I want to talk about the defense. So I, I've got some questions about this unit. However, let's start with a positive. How is Buda Baker not a bigger household name right now? Because I was <laughs> watching him against the Colts last yeah. week, and the guy is freaking incredible, man. And I know he's got like four Pro Bowls already. He's a two time All Pro, but when we talk about the best safeties in the NFL, you'll hear like the name Jamal Adams before you hear Buda Baker, which is absolutely absurd huh? to me. Why isn't he a bigger name in the NFL? It's criminal. It's probably because he's been playing in, in games that haven't mattered up until this season. You know, it, the Cardinals haven't been exactly the most relevant team. They haven't played on prime time. Uh, he did have kind of his coming out party the last time these two teams faced. Unfortunately, it was Andy Dalton at the quarterback position. Oh, I remember. The but it was Buda Baker kind of feasting, and you know he, he comes in like a missile. He can play in coverage. He can do everything you want, and it is criminal that a guy like Jamal Adams gets more run nationally than Buda Baker because he can really do it all. He's he's got the most tackling fuel probably in the league. I mean, it's it's just a surefire tackler when it, when anybody's in space against him. And uh, you know he practices from all reports that we get. He's the hardest practicer out there. Uh, I just think that he's. He's a silent leader, but he's a big time leader for this defense. He absolutely deserves more recognition than he's gotten. And he is a, he's a huge part of this Arizona Cardinals defense and kind of, you know, being on the back end of that thing and you can move him around and, and so versatile. That's what Steve Kime, the general manager loves. And the way that uh, Vance Joseph dials up exotic blitz packages, he's just kind of the perfect player for this defense. And yeah, absolutely uh, under kind of un, under talked about, um, under recognized, and uh, some Cardinals fans 
prefer it that way. But uh, he was at one point the highest paid safety in the league before Jamal Adams got in that contract. Good, good he's signing, just an Seahawks awesome player. Yeah, he, he's he's so much fun to watch. Uh, all right, Alex, my last question uh, for you guys before we switch this thing over: the cornerbacks. Um, that's been a little bit of a problem spot for the Cardinals this year. Uh, Marco Wilson, I know got banged up a little bit in the last game. You can please update his status there, but how do you think the Cardinals corners match up with the re- Dallas receivers in this one? Not ideal, Bob. Uh, you know, like when you have, when you have Rashad Breeland, they run, that was supposed to be the saving grace after Shit. Marco Wilson, as you mentioned with, with the, with the shoulder injury, um, Robert Alford is on the IR. Even if designated return as Bo mentioned yesterday on our podcast, he's not gonna be able to come back to the playoffs. Um, it's not great. You know, this is something that we were talking about this offseason. It's easy to say some, somebody told somebody tweeted out in this verbiage, which is absolutely right. It's easy to take a test when you know all the answers. And that and, and that's what we've seen. So we know where it is now. Byron Murphy was a CB1 through the first two-thirds of the season or two-thirds mm-hmm. of the games played so far. He's leveled out, still at a top level, but he's not a world beater CB1 that makes up for the uh, the inabilities uh, of the others. Marco Wilson's played fine, but he's still a fourth-round pick that the Cardinals traded up for. You know, like some people deemed him as a first or second-round talent, but he's a work in progress as a rookie. I mean, it's going to be bleak, but the thing that the Cardinals have as Bo, and just piggybacking on your last question, they have the best, in my opinion, the best safety duo in football. Jalen Thompson is less of a household name than Buda Baker, but Jalen Thompson is Buda Baker light. You know, the uh, mm-hmm. two Pacific Northwest kids, Two guys that didn't have huge draft capital. I'm sure, Marcus, you knew about Buda Baker coming out of college, but a lot of people were asleep when, when they were playing football in Washington. Um, it's going to be the safeties that are going to have to be the saving grace, and it's going to be the pass rush that's going to have to try and get through this offensive line. The latter has been absolutely non-existent. So when we see where the Cardinals are defensively on Sunday, that's pretty much going to paint a picture of what the Cardinals are going to look like in Week 18 also. You know, Brashad, who knows what Brashad Breeland's going to be like? I mean, the fact that they let Rasul Butler walk and now he's an all pro in Green Bay, like it, Douglas. it's, it, it's oh, Rasul Douglas. What am I talking? Rasul Butler? Wow. We talking Miami <laughs> Heat here? Um, you know, he had a sweet stroke. He did. Um, it, it, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be the thing that Dak's going to attack. And I mean, I, I think it's going to be a light Ezekiel Elliott game, even though the run game mm-hmm. is the thing the Cardinals struggle with the most with that many weapons. Oh man, I'm with, I mean, this is this could be problematic for the Cardinals. Alex Nancy Bulbrock locked on Cardinals. Marcus Mosier locked on Cowboys. All right, enough. Okay, e- enough introspection on the Cardinals. Uh, it's our turn to kind of pick apart the Dallas Cowboys, who look like absolute world beaters after their Sunday night mashing of the Washington Professional Football Team. Little fun fact: that's a team Bo uh, rooted for growing up. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of a double whammy for Bo on Sunday <laughs> night. Alex Nancy Bulbrock locked on Cardinals. Marcus Mosier. Locked on Cowboys crossover Thursday. We'll be back in just a moment. All right. Final segment crossover Thursday. Marcus Mosier locked on Cowboys also does a great job with fantasy uh, with, with the uh, locked on podcast network. Um, how are your fan? How many fantasy teams do you have? Uh, this is a bad question. So if you're talking about yeah. like season long leagues where I actually have to change my lineups. Yes. Like 30, okay. but leagues that like, throw up. you just draft and forget like 4,000 ish. Okay. Okay, I'm, a lot. I I can't wrap my head around that last number. So what I'm gonna do? That's like that's like Will Chamberlain sleeping with ten thousand. I just can't. I can't wrap my head around it. Okay, <laughs> listen, these are just leads you drafted. You forget about it. You don't even look at them. So like I'm doing them all summer long. So what's the point, Mosier? Then what's the point? <laughs> what's the points to make money, man? You just sit there and you, you smoke. Are those all money leads? Okay, I'm not. I'm not done. gonna. I'm not gonna talk about your account either. So like so okay so thirty <laughs> so thirty leagues that you focus on, and that's cool. Like I, I know. It happens. I mean, that's part of your job. Like, yeah. that's one of the fun parts. Drafting is, it's not just like Bo and me where it's like two drafts, drafting with buddies, forgetting like the last three rounds of the draft, you know, the whole thing <laughs> where it's just like, where it's a fun atmospheric thing. 30 leagues that you focus on every week. Are you waiver wiring every single league? Like, is this like a, a methodical thing? And we'll get back to the Cowboys in a second, but yeah. it's week 17. It's a good question. Other things good to talk. I'm just curious about, I'm just curious. Yeah, so I spend a good part of like the, the entire morning on Sunday, you know, changing lineups, picking up guys. Uh, there's obviously some leagues that kind of fall to the wayside. You just can't be completely focused on 30 leagues, but like 10 leagues that I really, really care about, I care about beating people in. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I'm not saying I, I do well in all these leagues, but they are a lot of fun to play. In. 
Fantastic. That's great. Maybe we can give us both some tips. Okay, so I want to start with the defense for you guys as well. The offense is, you know, the, the popcorn and everything with the offense with Dak and Zeke, et cetera, and all of the receivers. Mm-hmm. If you had to pick one player to have on the defense and you had to let the other one walk, Trevon Diggs or Micah Parsons? Oh, that's such a good question. Uh, it's probably Diggs. I'd let Diggs walk because – the Cowboys linebackers are still a major issue. Like that might be the thing that gets them knocked out of the playoffs is I think if you have a team that uses a lot of, you know, quarterback runs like the, the Cardinals do, or you use, use a lot of misdirection and crossing routes, you can expose the Cowboys linebackers, but Micah Parsons can kind of eliminate all that stuff. You can rush the passer. I think Parsons is probably the more important player, but my goodness, they're, they're so good together. Yeah, man, I, that was very political as far as that answer is concerned. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't, I don't blame you. It's worse. It's That's the yeah. answer. But w- when you look at this defense, it actually uh, not a bad matchup for the Arizona Cardinals because most of the pressure that they give up is in the interior. Do, does Dallas have enough pressure that they can get up the gut to really disrupt what trial, uh, Kyler Murray's trying to do? Because when he sees that pressure up the gut, it it, it takes him out of the ability to kind of do what he does, you know, scramble around, see the ball, you know, obviously not your traditional size quarterback, uh, get seeing the the play down the field. You think Dallas can get enough pressure up the gutters? Are they just going to try to impose their will with Dexter Lawrence and in Micah Parson coming off the edge? Yeah. So I think if you would look at this, like on our lads and you look at the depth chart, you would say, Oh, the Cardinals probably match up pretty well here because the Cowboys defensive tackles are not great. They'll be okay. But what Dan Quinn does is he uses a lot of stunts. He's going to bring Demarcus Lawrence inside on pass rushing situations. They're going to line Micah Parsons right up over the center and blitz him and drop him back. Like they're going to do a lot of things to create different looks for the Cardinals. So while they, you know, on Madden, if you were playing this, I don't think they they would work out well. It's not exactly the way it works. I think the Cowboys are going to be able to create pressure with the front four. They're going to blitz. They're going to bring guys off the edge. They're going to bring corners. They're just a very multiple defense that I think will have some success getting to Kyler. Now, the big thing here, as you guys know, getting to Kyler isn't always the issue. It's actually being able to bring him down, right? Because he's so good at slipping out of tackles. That's where I'm curious to see how the Cowboys fare in this one. I I do want to just put a a button on the Micah Parsons situation. Did they cut Jalen Smith because they saw Micah Parsons as like, oh, okay. Or was, was that more Jalen Smith not being able to perform? I think it was a couple of things. I, I obviously they wanted more sma- snaps from Micah Parsons. That mm-hmm. that certainly played a far, part in it. But Jalen Smith's contract was guaranteed in 2022 if there was an injury, and it was the same case in 2021. He had wrist surgery at the end of the season to make sure that he was on the team for the 2021 season. I don't think mm-hmm. the Cowboys wanted to get into that situation again this year because they knew he wasn't an NFL caliber linebacker and they didn't want to pay him anymore. So I I think it's a little bit of a combination of both, but more so they just didn't want to pay that player anymore. Arizona Cardinals defensive coordinator Vance Joseph loves to blitz the quarterback. He does. He loves man coverage. Dak Prescott just absolutely cuts up opposing defenses when they blitz him. I mean, the best in the league, isn't he, Marcus? It, it, it seems like a bad matchup, especially if the Arizona Cardinals and their lack or lack of depth at corner uh, to go zone on, on the Cowboys. Uh, you know, do you see playing kind of on our side of the football, just seeing how how can the Arizona Cardinals slow down Dak? Because he seems like he's kind of gotten out of that slump and is back at pl- performing at a Pro Bowl level. Yeah, the key to stopping Dallas is just getting them into long third downs. This is a team that typically doesn't do very well on third and seven, third and eight, third and nine. So if you can slow down their first down runs, if you can just get them in those long situations and then stack the box and force guys to beat man coverage, that's how you win. But if the Cowboys are in second and one or third and two, they're just, they're going to kill you that way. So I expect Vance Joseph to blitz probably a lot on early downs. Um, but that's, that's really the key. It's as simple as not allowing the Cowboys to get, First downs on second down. It's it's really that. It. I mean, I feel like Julian Council when we did the crossover <laughs> with the Panthers before oh, the Panthers on. just blew the doors off. Where it's like, how are the Cardinals going to win this game? I and I, I do want to ask my favorite player to watch on this team. Sure, you know CD's been great. The Cardinals had a chance to draft him. Mm-hmm. Amari Cooper's been a vision since they traded a first round pick for him. He he learned how to catch the ball when he wasn't in Oakland. Like I don't. Amari Cooper is one of the biggest anomalies from the wide receiver position we've seen in the last decade. Where he went from guy that could not catch ball 
from Alabama, who is a top flight guy, to a guy that's a that's an all pro wide receiver, just with a changing of scenery and a, a, obviously a changing of quarterback. But for me, it's Tony Pollard because Tony Pollard, I'm shocked, and I've, I've tweeted out about this a couple times this year. The Cardinals should offer a two and a five for Tony Pollard. Like, I cannot believe that Tony Pollard hasn't said, "Get me out of here," because Zeke's gonna be the guy, right? Like he's he's had a he's had a career uh, resurrection this year. He, he, with a lull from last year, you know, injuries and whatnot. Are they just keeping Tony Pollard so no other team has him? I think that's a little bit to it, right? I think they know that in the NFL today, you have to have two running backs that you trust. And the Cardinals have two, and James Conner and, and Chase Edmonds. The Cowboys know that there's going to be certain games where Tony Pollard's the better matchup, and there's certain games that Zeke's the better matchup. And I really like the split that we've seen over the last month where it's, Hey, Ezekiel, here's 12 touches for you. Tony Pollard, here's 10 touches for you. And then there's two other, two, three other for Corey Clement. Like, I kind of think that's a winning strategy in today's NFL. Don't overload these running backs uh, with a ton of touches. And for Tony Pollard, like, this is actually probably a good thing because he's only in his third year. He's going to make it to free agency in 2023, and he's going to have a ton of production, but not a lot of wear and tear on his body. So you could see him get a pretty nice contract in free agency which you typically don't see for a, you know a, a running back going into year five. So I actually think uh, I actually think that's a pretty a pretty viable strategy for the Cowboys. So this is going to be a really fun game, Bo and Alex. I don't think this is going to be a blowout. I know that's maybe what we're sounding like on this show. I, I promise it's not going to be like that. This is going to be either. Uh, this is going to be a close one throughout. I have I have no doubt. So uh, we just want to we wish you best of luck. We hope that we don't meet in the playoffs. Right? That'd be that'd be really nice. <laughs> Hopefully both the Cowboys and the Cardinals can face, you know, an easy team like the Eagles or something in the first round of the playoffs. But uh, check out Bo and Alex on Locked On Cardinals every single day. Uh, you can check out the Locked On Cowboys podcast, and uh, we'll see you guys back here on Friday.